Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Somebody say, I'm an overcomer. I'm, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. That's another way of saying I'm a winner. I win. And the reason we do is not because, you know, we've, we can do anything, everything in our own strength, but we've got somebody that helps us. We've got the greatest helper in the world, in the universe, the Holy Spirit. And He lives in us, and He's with us all the time. And Jesus said He will guide you into all the truth. He'll bring to your remembrance everything I've said to you. He'll even show you things to come. And we want to be actively... Uh, looking to Him to do that in us. The, the proverb said, In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. And so you want to all through the day and night, as things come up, don't try to do it on your own. Check with Him. Look inside where the Holy Spirit resides. Look inside and check. You're not trying to hear voices. You're not trying to see things. You're not trying to feel things physically. Uh, you're looking for the witness, and thoughts will come from Him, right out of your inside up to your mind, and it's from Him, and it's always right when it's from Him. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the classroom with us, and let's get more answers today. Father, we, we look to You, we acknowledge You, we open ourselves up to You, and we say, Lord, uh, uh, give us answers and direction and help for right now, exactly the things you would have us to focus on and think about. Uh, we ask for them, answers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In uh, the Bible, in, in the book of Luke, if you'd look with me, please, Luke chapter 17, let's continue in our study of the healing of the ten lepers. We've been now for some weeks on this uh, study we're calling Faith for Healing, taking one at a time these 20 individual cases in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we've gone all the way from the first one down now to the 18th one in our study, and it is this one, Luke 17, the healing of the ten lepers. Beginning in verse 11. It says, it came to pass as he, Jesus, went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Why don't you say that out loud, class? As they went, as they, went they were cleansed. They were cleansed. It's, it's significant to note that in this healing of these ten individuals, there was no prayer. There was no laying on of hands. There was no anointing of oil. There was no prayer of agreement. Do you see what I'm talking about? There was simply an acting on the Word. Can you still be healed that way today? Yes. By, by acting on the Word only. You know, one of the occasions, there are two occasions in these accounts where Jesus remarked that the individuals, not only did they have faith, but He said they had great faith. Faith He hadn't seen in the whole country. And one of them, was when the centurion said concerning his servant that he didn't even need Jesus to come to his house if he would just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And that's when Jesus remarked, I hadn't seen faith like this in the whole country basically. So that is the strongest, highest level of faith. Doesn't require to see, it doesn't require to feel, Come on, can you see this? It's based completely on the spoken word 
from the master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of course, what pleases God? Faith pleases God. So the more faith that's involved, the more God is pleased with us in any and every situation. So we want to watch about clamoring to feel and to see, always wanting additional natural material evidence. I know uh, back years ago, uh, when the Lord first began to deal with me about the ministry, I didn't know that he was dealing with me about the ministry. I had no plans to be a minister, to be a preacher. This is back in my uh, late teens as a teenager. And um, there came a point where the Lord really began to deal with me, and I didn't know what about. I just knew something wasn't right. I, I needed to find something. I needed to get to something. And so it, it, it would get me out of bed at night, and I'm praying, and I'm, sometimes I'd walk around outside, and I'm looking up in the night sky, and, and I'm like, what, God? What? Talk to me. Tell me, and, and I'm wanting to hear something. I'm wanting to feel something. I'm wanting them to write it in the sky. I mean, now, now you're laughing, but have you ever been there? But see, that's, that's wanting external, physical something. And that's because of how physical I was, how natural I was. I was way more natural than I was spiritual. But God is spirit, right? God is spirit. And the scripture says in, in Romans that the Spirit of God bears witness with, with what part of our being? With our spirit. If you look in Romans 8, 14, 15, 16, the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. Now that's not the same as your head. Not the same as your head. You know, if you said, Brother Keith, I'm going to call you. Uh, later on this afternoon, and I'm waiting on your call, I'm expecting your call. That doesn't mean I go stand by the stove. <laughs> you might say, what do you mean? You're not going to call me through the stove. That's not the, the way the call is going to come. It's going to come through the phone. So me standing by the stove, or the furnace, or the sprinkler head, <laughs> now you're laughing, but people are doing this. They're doing this, and if you want to hear from God, you don't just focus on your head, and you don't just focus on your physical sensations. And yet, because most people are so natural, that's most of, and sometimes all of what they know is what they can touch, feel, smell, taste. But we're spirit, and He's spirit, and He's going to communicate with you through your own spirit the inner man. And again, that's not your intellect. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. So obviously there's a difference, right, between heart and the head, the understanding. And so finally, you know, uh, I just, I was praying again one night in our little uh, living room that we had and uh, I kind of just fell over on the side. I just like, exhausted. I'm like, God, I, I don't know what to do. And, and inside me, I don't mean I heard a voice, but very definitely, you know, the scripture talks about that still, small voice. And yet it's not an audible voice. And the Lord spoke to my heart. I knew it was him. He drew my attention to the Bible that was sitting over on the, uh, the coffee table and had been there for some time. I didn't know the last time I had been into it, but but the Lord said this to me. The, the thoughts came up, up out of my heart. He said, son, I've said many things to you already in the book. Find out what I've already said to you. And if I want to say something else to you, I will. And that was when I, be, I began realizing I can hear from him out of the word. Amen. And uh, I began to, to realize Excuse me, even though it's different human writers, it's the same voice. Same voice in Genesis as it is in Matthew. 
same voice in uh, uh, the Psalms as it is in the book of Revelation. Different human instrument, but the same voice. And why would the Lord tell me something like that? And I'm sure he's told many other people similar things. Because if you're just going by spiritual experiences, even though it might be spectacular and real, you, you wouldn't really know who's talking to you unless you've got some kind of standard to check it by, to measure it by. And the more you're full of this word, the more quickly you'll recognize if it's him uh, speaking to your heart or if something else. The enemy's out there. He'll try to trick you. He'll try to mislead you and deceive you. And so the further I went with it, I saw the, the wisdom I, I need to find. And so many answers are already right here, right? And, and when you see it in the word, you don't have to ask. There it is. There's your answer. But then he also will speak to your heart about personal detail things. It'll always be in line with this written word, never contrary to it, because it's the same spirit. So the author of this book lives inside the born again believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said out loud, the author of the book, the author of the book lives, inside lives inside me 24 7. Hallelujah. All the time. He's right there. And so what you want to do when you don't understand something in the Word, you got the author inside you. You say, uh, what were you saying when you wrote that? What, did, what does that mean? And he'll usually take you to other verses and things and bring it together for you. But um, thank God we, we can hear from him. And it is acting on these words that actually activates the power, that releases the power. As we talked about in previous classes, if they had not made the effort to go to where Jesus was passing by, they'd have never had a miracle. If they had not cried out and asked for mercy, did you know the scripture said you have not? Why? Because you asked not. There's so many things people are doing without they simply just, they don't ask for it. You, you must ask. Ask and you'll receive that your joy may be full, Jesus said. Ask, ask. And don't think that, you know, the Lord's too busy or, or it's too trivial for you. That's, that's underestimating His ability. He is so big, He can keep up with everything at the same time and handle the big request and the tiny request at the same time, it doesn't overload him. It doesn't max him out. <laughs> he could answer every prayer of every human being on the planet at once, and the lights in heaven wouldn't even flicker. <laughs> wouldn't even flicker. Don't underestimate how big he is and how his ability. No, ask. When you need something, ask. It doesn't have to be a big ordeal. Just take just a moment and say, Lord, I ask. I ask for wisdom for that. I ask. It can be as simple as, Lord, I, uh, I'm asking for a parking place. <laughs> right? Lord, I'm asking for this. I'm asking for that. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, show me where to get this item, you know. Uh, I'm asking for the right place and the right thing. You know, the Lord uh, dealt with me about this some years ago. The, the scripture says, pray without ceasing. Well now, that doesn't mean you pray every breath. I mean, there's times you're asleep, right? Are you praying then? Well, not necessarily. I mean, your spirit doesn't sleep, but no. What's it, what it, you, it could be translated this way, never stop uh, with, with prayer. It's a way of life. And uh, I know I was with some ministers, my wife and I, at a meeting some years ago, and we went out to eat afterwards. And uh, the person that was waiting on us, they came and took our order. And as they're walking away, we went back to talking. And the Lord dealt with me while the other folks were talking. Now's the time to pray over your food. Because we, uh, we always waited till the food came back, you know. And then when the food is there, then we prayed over our food, then we ate. The Lord prompted me, now's the time. I thought, Really? Now's the time. And so I'm, I'm checking my heart about that. And the Lord helped me to see this. He said, yeah, the difference between the cook in the back. 
getting you a spoiled piece of meat or a good one is reaching here or here. Right? Is that true or not? Reaching here or here. And he said, if you, if you ask me, and see the scripture talks about uh, that the things are in our meals are sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And so it shouldn't just be saying grace. What does that even mean? You've got to watch about things being reduced to a religious ritual. No, there's a specific reason why. And also, uh, Mark 16 talks about one of the signs that follow believers is if they'd eat any deadly thing uh, or drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. And so there's some sanctification that can go on. And so I, I, I told the guys we were with, I said, you know, let's do this. I, I had a prompting in my spirit, so I prayed it like this. Uh, Lord, we ask you to direct them in the selection and preparation and handling of our food, and we call it sanctified, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Well, sin, that gives the Lord an um, opportunity to get involved. And as I'm praying that, I saw other things that would be a praying without ceasing. Like if I go to the store to buy some item and uh, they, they got it in the back and they're going back in the back to get the box of the thing I'm purchased, the Lord prompted me, while they're going, right, ask me to say, Lord, direct them in the selection of that item. The difference between you getting one that you'll have to bring back next week, <laughs> right, one that broke on the second day, or one that lasted you till you got tired of looking at it, is them reaching here or here. Isn't that right? Reaching here or here. But you have not because you ask not. And so praying without ceasing is a way of life. Then you're just all through your life. It doesn't mean you got to get on your knees and fold your hands and pray for an hour about the thing. You just say, Lord, I ask you, Direct them in the selection and preparation, uh, handling of that. Direct them. Uh, give me favor in this situation. And, and direct them is how they do this with me and how they handle it. Just a, sh a prayer that takes 10 seconds, just a few seconds, can be an access point for the Lord, for His ministering spirits to get involved. So... I said all that because they asked. They asked for mercy, and what did they get? They got mercy in the form of miracle healing, something that no man or woman could have done for them. I mean, something that no human agency could effect for them. But before the day's over, they're no more outcasts. They're no more in pain and discomfort. They're no more unclean, untouchables. They are clean, hallelujah, hallelujah. healthy, strong, restored, touchable, yes. huggable. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Had to be life-changing, right? I mean life-changing. And of course, it's all a picture we talked about earlier in earlier classes. It's a picture of how uh, everybody without the Lord is unclean. And He makes us acceptable. He makes us touchable. <laughs> he makes us huggable <laughs> by the Father God Himself to the point where now having been cleansed and washed by the blood, we can come boldly right to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prior to that, uh, we wouldn't be allowed we are too defiled, too ungodly, too unclean to be in His presence. And the only way we could be made clean and acceptable was by the blood of Jesus. We could never get ourselves there. We couldn't clean ourselves up. You can't do it. It's, that's why Jesus had to come. If we could clean ourselves up, if we could make ourselves acceptable. And, you know, people talk about 
uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm working on myself to become a better man, to become a better person, and I believe I'll get there. Well, you should be growing and developing, but if you're talking about making yourself good enough to, to go to heaven, you're not going to get there. Nobody, if you could do it on your own, it was not necessary for Jesus to come. No, it was necessary. Nobody gets to the Father except by Jesus. Oh, but anybody can come that'll believe and it takes the pressure off of you and it is so frustrating trying to fix yourself when you can't. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. You need help. Yes. Right? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you need help. You need help. <laughs> and here's the good news. We have help. We got the best help there has ever been, the Holy Spirit himself. They came, they asked, and they received. They lifted up their voices, verse 13, and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He saw them. He said to them, now hear the mercy. Hear the mercy. Go. Are you listening, class? The mercy of the Lord that they asked for was manifested in him instructing them to do something. To do something. Faith without an action is dead. It, it, it produces no, no results. If you're not persuaded enough of something to act on it, then you don't really believe it. And so the mercy of God is revealed in a command. Go show yourself to the priest. Now, if they had refused to act on that, would this story be in the book? It would not. It would not. There would have been no manifestation of healing. There would have been no change in their bodies, no change in their lives. And they could have very well done that. The reason it's in the book is because they had enough faith to obey and act on it. But they could have stood there and said, what do you mean go show yourself to the priest? Everybody knows you don't go show yourself to the priest till after you're healed. I mean, they'd have probably got in trouble. What are you doing coming here? You know you're not supposed to be here. You know, heal us and we'll go show, we'll go. But that's not how faith works. Is it? I said, that's not how faith works. And here we see the timeline of faith. Hold your place here and look in Mark, the 11th chapter at the great Mark 11, uh, 22, and 3 and 4, talking about faith because it, it reveals the timeline of faith. Mark 11, 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say to you that whoever will say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. Now he speaks to the mountain before or after the mountain moves. <laughs> it's not a trick question, class. Is it? Huh? Before. Before. Everybody say before. 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 And then in verse 24, therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, now when is a time. When shows the timeline. When you pray, do what? Believe that you receive them. Them what? The things you desired, the things you asked for. When do you believe you receive them? When you pray. And then what would happen? And you shall have them. That's not before you pray. See the timeline? You can say it like this. Believe you receive them when? Right then when you pray. When will you have them after you believe you receive them? After I believe I receive them? Yes. <laughs> so people say, well, I, yeah, but I don't have it yet. That's why you need to believe you receive it. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not going to say I have it and I don't have it yet. Uh, you, you're not saying you feel like it. 
You're not saying you look like it. You're not saying the tests say that you have it. You're saying you believe you receive it. You believe you receive it. But when do you believe you receive it? Before. Everybody say before. Oh, this is the thing. When do you believe you receive it? Before you see it. Before you feel it. Is that what Jesus is telling these men to do? By acting on this, they have to decide, okay, we're going to act like we're healed. Is that right? They, they're, they're acting like this word means we're healed. They don't look healed. They don't feel healed. All the symptoms, they've had no test run. They've had no, no doctors or priests look at them. And yet, he's telling them, act like you're already healed and go to the priest for them to look at you and pronounce you healed. Yeah, but we're not healed. <laughs> Can you see the dilemma? And what you're getting into is walking by sight or walking by faith. And what does the scripture say? We walk by faith, not by sight. But you have to feed on something different to think that way. And you have to be focused on something more that's unseen than you are something that's seen. And the Lord gave them a word. Go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show. <laughs> Go and show yourself to the priest. They could have stood there. They could have argued with him. They could have said, you know, minister to us and then we'll do it. They could have said, well, as soon as we see results, as soon as we see a change, we'll go. That story wouldn't be in here. The reason this story's in here is he said, go show yourself to the priest. They looked at each other. <laughs> is that right? And they headed toward the priest. And what happened? What happened? What happened? As, oh hallelujah, are you there? As they acted like it was true. As they acted like they were healed. As they obeyed the word of the Lord, it manifested. They were cleansed. Can you say amen? amen. And our time's up again today. Come back tomorrow. We've got more to see about this. We'll see you soon here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.